Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 393, the Down Under edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Old, and it is Friday the 11th of May 2018 here in Parramatta, New South Wales, Australia. I bet you didn't know that Anglican TV can do time travel. It's actually tomorrow we're recording this, which is cool because my favorite day of the week is Friday. Yeah, it should be known. It's a great day. Except today was legs day, Kevin, in the gym, and so I'm not happy. Oh, no. All right, let's talk about the, the recent news happening down there. Uh, now, people may not be able to hear you clearly. You're having some microphone trouble or Skype is you know censoring you. Uh, I will try and make adjustments in, in the post to, to make up for it. Um, people woke up and discovered that New Zealand... Uh, after their uh, synod decided to vote to have local gay blessings by a majority vote. And I said, it's time to talk to David Old because you cover all things uh, below the equator for us. Uh, ho hoping to do some uh, Antarctica news one day. Uh, let's talk about New Zealand. Sure. So the General Synod of New Zealand, the Anglican Church in New Zealand, which is made up of three, as it were, overlapping uh, bodies, uh, one representing the, the, the Western European Church, one representing the Maori people, one representing the, uh, the Polynesian people of the wider uh, islands uh, around, came to the end of a quite long process of trying to work out what to do over same-sex relationships. And they've come to this uh, weird situation where they're saying now, we're not changing our doctrine of marriage, but we are going to let you bless same-sex marriages. And of course, the conservatives uh, have, have not been happy with that. It's been presented to them as a great compromise, which salves their conscience. They won't be forced to do anything. But of course, they're saying, well, if you're blessing these things, you're saying they're good. You're actually changing your doctrine of marriage. Uh, the, the vote went just as everybody thought it would go, uh, quite strongly in favor uh, in the General Synod. Uh, and now the conservatives have to decide what to do. Uh, and there's probably two primary factors that, that weigh in heavily now. Uh, the first is that they've, they've asked for a long time for the General Synod to provide them with some form of alternative oversight, perhaps in the form of an extra-provincial diocese or something like that, where they can remain members of that province, uh, uh, but, but, but come under a, a separate bishop. Uh, that's been knocked back uh, on, on, on a number of occasions, uh, both at the General Synod level, and I'm told in individual dioceses, uh, bishops have not been happy about it. So that's mm -hmm. one issue. The second issue is that the the ordination and the licensing vows in New Zealand require ministers uh, not only to make all the promises that you and I are familiar with, but also to submit to the General Synod. Uh, oh, really? And so, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happened immediately after the General Synod vote is that uh, the two main leaders of the FCA, the Fellowship of Confessing Anglicans in New Zealand, who were members of the General Synod, resigned their positions on General Synod. Wow, uh, and you can read those um, read those resignation letters. Uh, they're charitable, but, but they're clear. Uh, so, what is the future then for New Zealand? Obviously, it's not official yet. It has to go to a panel, and the panel will uh, obviously adopt it. Um, oh, it's going. It's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the, the little sort of select committee that needed to be in play, I, even at the general synod, to to tick things off and get them back to the synod. Uh, was already in motion. Uh, it's all. It's 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 done. This is a done deal. So the question now is, what can conservatives do? And I think the only outcome there's going to be is some form of alternative oversight. Either the New Zealand Church will agree to that, or it's going to happen anyway. Uh, so the key diocese to watch in terms of dioceses is, is the diocese of Nelson, uh, which is uh, a, a, a spoken of as an evangelical diocese. But then also in the Diocese of Christchurch, the, the largest, strongest churches are evangelical. Uh, and so you should expect to see something pretty uh, interesting happening there. And, and I would not be surprised if by the end of the year, and possibly even announced at Jerusalem next month at GAFCON, you will see an Australian bishop providing oversight to disaffected Anglicans in New Zealand. Yeah, GAFCON's getting a lot of good press lately. Uh, this is yeah. I, I see a, a New Zealand branch of GAFCON coming up, or uh, at yep. least something uh, local to Australia. Um, Australia's in the news as well. Uh, you and some other people that I'm not going to mention have been in possession for a little while. Uh, an agreement, a secret agreement amongst bishops about what they will do with same-sex marriage or no same-sex marriage in Australia. 
Um, before we get in the story, if you think New Zealand is complicated uh, geometrically uh, and, and demographically, explain a little bit of how Australia is laid out. So Australia is made up of uh, a number of dioceses, about 23 dioceses. Most of them are in individual provinces within the province of Australia, uh, roughly equating to the states of Australia, so Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, uh, and, 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 and so on. Uh, we meet in a general synod, but every three or four years we meet in general synod. The dioceses tend to be fairly autonomous. That's a, that's a deliberate choice. Uh, at our formation in 1963 when we formally broke away from the Church of England. It was established in that way. And what that means is that the, the national church just can't push things through uh, at the center without the diocese agreeing to it. So that's our structure. We elect a primate, he acts as a chair uh, more than anything else. We've had a bit of movement recently. Our first um, female archbishop, Kay Goldsworthy, was translated uh, from uh, Gippsland Diocese uh, back to Perth to become Archbishop. Nobody was surprised by, by that move. The real question, of course, has been what will happen now that the government in, uh, in Australia has legislated for same-sex marriage? What is the response in the church? Now, the official response is really, really clear. At General Synod last year, and we spoke to you at the time, and even had the, the movers and seconders of the yeah. motion uh, on the show, uh, we had a pretty scathing censuring of the Scottish Episcopal Church for uh, sanctioning uh, same-sex uh, marriages, and we declared that to be inconsistent with the doctrine of the church and the teaching of Christ. Very, very clear language, a unfailingly clear language. Nevertheless, there are bishops in the Australian church who are very keen to push ahead with some form of blessing of people who've got married uh, in, into same-sex same -sex marriages. And so the bishops at, at their meeting, their annual meeting in March, uh, saw the need to get some form of agreement on, on how things ought to progress, but they made it secret. They made it very, say, very, very secret. Because, well, sort of, but not. A very, very strange things going on. So so normally they, there are a number of protocols, and there still are that the bishops have, and they publish, and it's kind of, this is how we're gonna do things together. So in effect, this was a, a, an extended protocol but they didn't disclose it publicly like they normally do. And do you know why they didn't? Because of me, Kevin. Oh, uh, so David Old.net. I know, unbelievable. And a number of bishops who came back after the meeting, and you know how these things work, after these meetings, you, you call your sources. Mm -hmm. And you say, what can you give me? And you and I are always disappointed because we never get everything that we want, but we usually get something and enough for us to publish and, and verify. Uh, and they were like, I can't talk to you, David. And I can't talk to you especially because your name kept getting mentioned because those guys that you show what they do, they're so furious. They're so hurt. They're so upset that you would dare to publicize what they do. Uh, and so... They said, we have made an agreement not to not to get it to you. And so I then had to start chasing around for this document uh, in, in other ways. Now, eventually I got it uh, and got it from a number of different sources so I could verify its accuracy. Uh, and then I started to go through the process of do I publish or not? Because, you know, one, you've got a scoop. Uh, and the document is, I can tell you this now because it's out in public, the document is very robust. It really clearly states that we, you cannot do anything unless um, you go through the official channels of the Anglican Church, which effectively is the General Synod, they're never going to get it through the General Synod. I mean, we've just censured the Scottish Episcopal Church. Uh, for doing okay, the same thing. you're saying you can never get it. We're talking about same-sex blessings of marriage. Yes. Yeah, it, yes. It's basically DOA uh, for the immediate future. In, in, in any proper canonical form. Mm -hmm. so, so the problem is there are a number of bishops who are willing to go on their own, to go rogue, as it were. And my understanding is that at that meeting, uh, they were told very, very clearly, you do that, we will put you through the disciplinary process. Wow, discipline in the Anglican Communion. Oh, it's, my now, heart's fluttering. So I think what's really important to know is that for, for a number of years, well beyond, uh, earlier even than our current Archbishop, the Conservatives, uh, in the in in Australia have made it known very clearly this is the line mm -hmm. there is no crossing this line officially uh, and and it is on 
if this, if this line is crossed, have made it clear why that is. And the Liberals, fair enough to some sense, have have understood that and not pushed too hard, although we can talk about other things uh, in a moment because it gets even more complicated. Uh, but that's essentially where we're at. They, they kind of value collegiality. They don't want to push ahead uh, too hard. However, uh, we were expecting somebody this year to do something, and probably the prime candidate was, was Perth. Mm-hmm. Uh, last time a, bless, uh, a blessings for same-sex relationships was passed through the Perth Synod, actually passed, uh, the Archbishop um, vetoed it, but Kay Goldsworthy, who at the time was assistant bishop, voted for it. So everyone, the, the expectation was she's been elected archbishop now on the premise that she will push these things through, and there are obviously a number of other dioceses as well. That's now not going to happen. Well, good. I'm proud of you guys in Australia. Um, well, this is yeah. story. Can I keep talking the story? Because it's a rip roarer. So I decide, am I going to publish or not? And I call some key conservative figures and I say to them, look, I've got the document now. Uh, you guys didn't give it to me as hard as I tried. I respect that. Um, what's your opinion on publishing it now? And can I just tell you, it was to, to a man. It was, don't publish. We've worked really hard to, to win this agreement. We don't want to do anything to upset it. Uh, it wouldn't help you personally if you published it. And I'm like, I don't care what they think about me, but you know. Uh, and so I, I sat back on it on the understanding that this was this hard fought, this hard fought uh, agreement. No one wants to upset the apple cart. We won't publicize it. The bishops are allowed to distribute it at their discretion. So a couple of bishops I know already have spoken to their clergy about it, but I still couldn't get a hold of a copy that way. Um, and then, and then yesterday, the Melbourne Anglican, which is the newspaper of the Diocese of Melbourne, which is the seat of the primate, published a front page article, or at least I saw it yesterday, front page article outlining all the details of the agreement. Now, <laughs> there's another there's another chapter to the story. But, At the but, start of the but week, you, you did the right thing, okay? In the end of the day, you did the right thing. Look, I did the right thing. And can I just say this? And it needs to be said clearly again and again and again and again. All the conservative leadership that I spoke to did the right thing. Mm-hmm. Men and women who previously have been having the information and say use this wisely they all dried up there was an absolute total desire to make this agreement work by not publishing it from the conservatives it's the liberals who were afraid of it being published because it it, it paints them into a corner and i think some of their some of their supporters will be furious that they've agreed to it mm. oh definitely um, yeah i mean this is anyway. devastating as far as that goes um well, do you- Am, am I going to see you at GAFCON again? What's that, sorry? I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, Skype is really having some fun with us. Am I going to see you at GAFCON 3? You are going to see me at GAFCON 3 at Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to be busy. I, I understand the media stuff at GAFCON is going to be uh, far bigger and better this year. Uh, our, our viewers should expect some live streaming, should expect some, uh, some interviews with many, many different people uh, who are there. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun, but but Kevin, there's more stuff to happen here in Australia before before that happens. Can I share with you one more thing? Absolutely. On Monday, the Diocese of Gippsland, from whence Kay Goldsworthy went back to Perth to become Archbishop, uh, announced their new their new bishop, and their new bishop is is Reverend Dr. Trelaw from Melbourne, uh, from South Yarra Parish. Uh, described to me as a, a hotbed of gay clergy uh, by, by by one clergyman uh, in, in the diocese there. And he, uh, in the government, in, in this submission debate going on around uh, quite how the same-sex marriage bill should be implemented, particularly with relation to churches, made a, a very, very clear submission saying the church needs to be allowed to bless same-sex marriage. Very, very clear. Wow. Uh, totally pro it. And he is the man that has been elected as bishop uh, in in Gippsland. Now, how in good conscience he could therefore sign up to the agreement that the bishops have just signed up to is beyond me. Uh, and, and I say in good conscience. Uh, now he'll sign up to it. He'll say, "Oh yeah, I'll defend the teaching of the church." And I want to go, but you don't believe it. <laughs> but you don't believe it. And here's the thing: there will be many people consecrating him who will know he doesn't believe it. Yep, and that's and the problem. We want to embed. We want to embed 
people into our leadership who we know do not believe the things that they're promising to uphold. So, you know, I, I put it this way in a piece I wrote yesterday. Uh, with one hand, you lay on hands to consecrate. With the other hand behind your back, you cross your fingers. That's the only way you can do it. It's the only way you can do it now. Uh, and, and this announcement, this announcement, how can I put this? There is great interest in many uh, diocesan offices around the country on this event. Good. It should be. I mean, and that's what we accuse Frank Griswold here uh, the same, because he flew back and forth. He told Ron Williams one thing, came back in America, and, you know, days later was doing something else. The, the cross yeah. the fingers doctrine um, exists in the church. Uh, anything else you want to cover before we uh, wipe up uh, our, our recording this Friday? Enough? <laughs> Is that not enough? We we are excited about we're excited about Gafcon now. Uh -huh. uh, that's that's going to be absolutely brilliant. I'm really looking forward to uh, gathering up again with with brothers and sisters from around the world. It was outstanding five years ago, Kevin. You and I were there. Oh, it was just a tremendous thing. And I'm looking forward to uh, meeting and encouraging those bishops in particular. I met a bishop at Nairobi who said he had been to Lambeth, and this was totally different. Yeah. He said it was just wonderful to look around the room and know we all believe in the same Lord Jesus Christ with the same gospel and we're all about the same work. So we've talked about all the bad stuff that's going on and sadly it's always centered around sexual ethics. But um, it's an exciting moment, I think, for, for the GAFCON movement. Uh, we'll be reaffirming our commitment to the gospel. We'll be encouraging one another in it. We'll be seeing how we can better uh, work together. Uh, and uh, the Diocese of Sydney will be there trying to serve and support uh, others in, in, in any way that they can. Uh, you and I got to do at least one thing together. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, we rented uh, we rented an Airbnb across the street from the convention center where we're going to have uh, Media Central for uh, uh, obviously Anglican TV and others who want to join us. It'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. So, no, it's not next year in Jerusalem, next month in Jerusalem. I know. <laughs> Thank you, David, for your time. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Old. And you've been watching episode 393 of Anglican Unscripted. <laughs> <laughs>